The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You are now tuned in to the PA Power Podcast featuring Jeff Upson and Eric Knopsnyder. PA Power Wrestling. PA Power Wrestling. Pennsylvania is wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? I'm Jeff Upson, joined by Eric Knopsnyder, and you are tuned in to the PA Power Podcast. Eric, it's my favorite time of the year, and I don't mean Christmas or the holidays. <laughs> it is yep. it, it is Powerade. Powerade time. Great week. Uh, I haven't been involved in it as long as you have, but but it's just a great event to go to every year. It, it is. Uh, every year, it's just, it brings some new excitement. Um I really do have a strong passion for this tournament. Uh, it's just the top quality guys from around the, the state and the nation. Um, and Frank Volcano Jr., who uh, is the tournament director, just does a, a wonderful job of bringing in the best guys and the best talent. We're actually going to have a chance to talk with him. Uh, he's going to take a moment out of his, his busy busy week here because he's got a tor- he ran a tournament today there. So uh, we're actually going to be able to talk to him a little bit about the history because this is a, the 50th year anniversary, Eric. And what's really neat about it is, in addition to the history, uh, is how they really focus on wrestling. You know, it's not just the top level guys. As you said, they've got a youth tournament going today. They've got a JV tournament. So, I mean, yeah, to win a Powerade title, you have to be really good. But they focus on a lot more than just the top guys at wrestling. They give a chance for everybody to improve. Uh, Everything about it is just very um, very smooth and the way that Frank does it. Uh, he has a lot of good good uh, support with him. He has guys that have been there for a very, very long time. Um, and you have fans that just continue to come back. I mean, I've seen I've seen the same people there for the last 10, 12 years. So, I mean, um, he, he's got a lot of the, uh, good support there. So, But the big thing is the wrestlers. Um, and Eric and I, a little bit off air, we were talking about the the weights and and what we're looking forward to, but we're just going to go through weight by weight and and what sticks out to us. We're going to talk about the seeds um, and what to look forward to. So uh, definitely get your, your popcorn ready because it's going to be a really good show in Cannonsburg. Um, So let's start out with one Oh six. So Kurt McHenry is the top seed. He's a sophomore from St. Paul's, Maryland. St. Paul's has uh, historically done well at the power tournament. He's the top seed. Uh, he was a state champion last year as a freshman. Um, he actually is just coming off a uh, a Beast of the East championship where he uh, he won in the finals. He, he got the championship at 106. Yeah, I would think he'd be the overwhelming favorite here. Uh, it's always tricky with 106 because you got a lot of unknowns this early in the year, some freshmen that can make some names for themselves. And and so that's possible, but uh, he's a guy that's ranked second nationally. I would think that uh, that he's definitely the favorite here. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Eric. Uh, Kurt's definitely got the experience, and he's definitely uh, going to be the favorite. We we also got a guy who we have ranked number one in the state of Pennsylvania is Darren Miller uh, from Kiski area, who's a sophomore. Didn't make it the state tournament last year, but uh, had a good off season. Really grinded some some matches out. I got to see him last week uh, against Cannon Mac. He was still wrestling up at one thirteen. Um, so he's a guy who, who comes in the seat at second looking to make a, a name for himself, uh, especially defending that, that, top, that top ranking in the state. So um, Nick Kayla, I believe that's, that's how you pronounce his name from Bergen Catholic, a freshman. He's the third seed. He finished in, I believe it was seventh place at the Beast of the East uh, from Bergen Catholic. So you're, that's a name you're going to hear a lot of in the next uh, 20 or 30 minutes is, is, is Bergen Catholic. Uh, what a power program they are from New Jersey. Yeah, definitely some great stuff out of there. Uh, they, they see, they're close enough to Pennsylvania that they see quite a bit of, of some of the Eastern powers out there. And now it's nice to, to get a chance to see them here on the Western side of the state. A guy who I got to see at the, the King of the Mountain is Nate Smith from Bish McDevitt. He was also one of our top incoming freshmen uh, of, of 2016, 2017. He's a freshman from Bish McDevitt. He's the fourth seed. He's ranked second in the state, uh, and as I said, he was a King of the Mountain champion, did, did some uh, damage there, had some good matches. Matt Ramos from Lockport, Illinois, is the uh, fifth seed. He's the 10th grader. Drew Munch from Wyoming Seminary is, is starting at, at 106 for Wyoming Seminary. He's another one. 
uh, who was in the top 20 uh, of our top incoming freshmen. He's a, he's a solid wrestler uh, for, for Wyman Sem. Uh, he's seated six, so I'm excited to see how Drew does against some of this, this top competition. Uh, Christian Fisher from Miffin County, who was a King and Mountain runner-up, he lost to Nate Smith in the, in the finals there. Uh, Christian comes in as the seventh seed, and he's ranked seventh in the state. So definitely some good competition coming in at 106. Yeah, as we said, with the freshmen, you never know at this early point in the season. So there are definitely some guys there that can show what they can do on the varsity level for the first time. Uh, but, yeah, definitely I think uh, Kurt McHenry is, is your favorite. And as you said, uh, Darren Miller and Nate Smith, Drew Munch, probably the, the top PA guys to, to look at and, and see what they can do there. Yeah, I agree with you, Eric. And just looking at the the rest of the the wrestlers, and um, Brandon Holt from St. Albans, West Virginia, is a sophomore. He's an eighth seed there. But looking at the rest of the the wrestlers in the 106 uh, going through, and just some names I highlighted as I thought maybe uh, could make some noise, Uh, Valerie Baker from Benton. She's one of the best uh, youth freestyle wrestlers in in women's wrestling there is. Uh, She's she's, she's won multiple national tournaments and, and just... Uh, she's beaten a lot of guys too. So uh, she's a junior this year, wrestling at 106. So I wouldn't be surprised to see her get a few matches uh, under her belt. Jacob Gardner from from Canada Mac. He's a, a freshman. I, I like his his chances of uh, making some noise. Uh, Cole Bear from Cedar Cliff. He's ranked 20th in the state in AAA. Um, he's a sophomore for, for Cedar Cliff. Uh, Jacob Brumet from Erie Prep, from Cathedral Prep. He's a he's a freshman. Uh, he was one of the ones featured in our top incoming freshman. I think he he could he could make some noise. Gabe Willishell from Grayer Latrobe. We saw him at, at the King of Mountain. He's ranked 12th in the state. Uh, Jeremy McPherson from North Hills is is ranked 25 in the state. Also a freshman. A guy who's not ranked in the state, but probably is going to after this week is Adam Wilcox from Reynolds. Uh, and any time those Reynolds guys get on the mat, you, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you can just about rank almost any Reynolds uh, guy that's in a starter. If you're you're starting for Reynolds, you're going to be pretty good. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, Eric. Uh, and Jason Geyer from Seneca Valley, he's a sophomore. He's 10th in the state. Uh, we saw him up at King of the Mountain. He gave Nate Smith all he could handle. I think that was a, an ultimate tiebreaker or at least a tiebreaker match that he dropped to Nate Smith. Um, so definitely Jason Geyer can, can make some noise um, and, and surprise a few people. But, you know, 106 is definitely wide open when it comes after Kurt McHenry. I, I would say Kurt's definitely the, the favorite, as you said. Uh, but it, it's, it's anyone else's game, you know, second through eight, in my opinion. Yeah, and I'm definitely interested uh, after hearing you talk about Nate Smith, interested in seeing him. Uh, you know, I've heard heard good things about Drew Munch. So definitely great to, to be able to see some of these young guys that we haven't seen at the varsity level yet and put them in this kind of atmosphere at Powerade with 50 teams in there and so many top guys in the in the state and the country and see how they react. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Eric. And and moving up to 113, talk about a loaded. I mean, 113 is just it's deep uh, in terms of Pennsylvania wrestlers. Um, Lewis Newell from Seneca Valley, who I was, I mean, I had him ranked number one in the state at 120. He drops to 13, uh, which I, I'm sort of surprised because he looked big at 120. I mean, not big, but he looked he looked like he was handling his own. I mean, he just tore through the King of Mountain uh, bracket there. I think he's one of the most impressive wrestlers uh, who doesn't get the credit or mention that he deserves. But he comes in as a uh, top seed at 113 pounds. Um, again, he was ranked the number one in the state at 120. Last year, he was a state runner-up. He's a junior from Seneca Valley. He's not ranked in the nation. Um, but I definitely think this is a guy who, who's going to turn some heads and, and maybe make some noise uh, at the Powerade. Well, if he can come out of this with a title, he'll definitely open some eyes because he's got some difficult competition. Uh, although he's the top seed, you got Robert Howard there from Bergen Catholic again in New Jersey. He's uh, ranked sixth or seventh in the nation, and you also have uh, Moshe Schwartz from Wyoming Seminary, who was ranked nationally at 106 and now up to 113. So some some very good competition there outside of the state, and then many more guys inside the state as well. Yeah, uh, you're, you're definitely right, Eric. Robert Howard's a freshman from Bergen Catholic, uh, very highly rated freshman. He was third at the Beast of the East 
uh, at 113 pounds. So he comes in as the second seed. Uh, Jacob Dunlop from Bell Vernon, who uh, we saw medal at the Ironman tournament. He's a senior. He's a third seed. Um, he's ranked third in the state. Last year, he was fourth at the Powerade. So definitely a, a journeyman guy. Like he, he's, he's has a lot of experience. This is no uh, you know new new road for him. He's he's been to Powerade. He knows what it's about. J.J. Wilson from Cedar Cliff. He's a sophomore. Uh, he's a fourth seed. He was a state qualifier last year. He's ranked ninth in the state, and he was fifth in the Powerade last year. So uh, a pair of, of some returning guys here that can can make some noise. And you had mentioned uh, Moshe Schwartz from Wyman Seminary, who was um, his, he's best known for uh, his freestyle. And he, he's a guy who was out of Colorado, uh, made the move to, to Wyman Seminary. Um, and he moves up to 113. I, I guess maybe the 106 was getting a little bit too tight of a of a of a cut for him. Yeah, it's a little surprising uh, doing it this point, but uh, you know, kids are growing. It's it's difficult to maintain that weight at times. So. Yeah, we normally see the the opposite at this time, right? With the two pound allowance. Yeah. Um, going through 113, uh, Dustin Chavez from Oakdale, California. He's a sophomore. He's a, the seventh seed. He finished fourth in the state. Uh, or I'm sorry, he was a state qualifier last year uh, in California. Bo Bayless from Reynolds, again a sophomore. He was he's the seventh seed. He was fourth in the state last year. He's ranked number one in the state in Double A. So Bo's one of those guys that I, I don't think he had the 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 Ironman tournament that he quite wanted to, but that was a very tough bracket for for him. So uh, it'd be interesting to see if Bo can bounce back because he's a seventh seed, but. Uh, you know, I could see him top top three, top four, depending on how how he uh, comes out. Yeah, absolutely. If he puts together a good tournament, that wouldn't shock me at all to see him uh, uh, pretty high up there. I mean, beating Dunlop, Howard, Newell, that that might be tough, but I could see him getting uh, in, in the top four. And here's a guy who I feel like's been around for like eight years, Keelan Kunselman from from Brookville area. He's a senior. He's the eighth seed. Uh, he was fifth in state last year. He makes a drop to 13. He was third. He was ranked third at 120 in the state. Uh, he finished eighth at the Powerade last year. Um, so he's the eighth seed. He was eighth last year. Uh, he was fifth in the state last year as well. So uh, Keelan, I think, is one of those guys who, as a senior, he's he's going to be looking to to make some. Uh, you know his last his last go around at the Powerade, a, a memorable one. So uh, be nice to see how he does. Now there's a lot of guys here that aren't in the top eight that are very impressive wrestlers. Yeah, you had highlighted one uh, from my area, Sebastian Kekic. He's a guy that I don't think many people know much about outside of the area because he wrestled at Johnstown last year and ended up not making weight the second day of districts, so he wasn't able to uh, to advance in the postseason. But uh, he's, he's very talented. Uh, I know he had turned a lot of heads in this area around Johnstown uh, for his exploits in, in junior high and wasn't able to, to build on that last year, but now at Bishop McCourt he'll definitely be looking to do that yeah i i agree with him not a lot of people are going to know his name outside of maybe the the area but definitely a guy to keep an eye on i, I would say the biggest name who's not seated um arguably and we're going to talk about that in a little bit here but i, I think one of the biggest names is sammy hilgis from north hills he's a freshman he's unseated he's ranked 12th in the state at 120 he made the drop to 13 as i expected he would um so Sammy has not really been tested thus far this this year. He is not. Uh, he rolled through basically everyone he, he wrestled uh, so far this year. He hasn't really had much of the, the competition um, that that uh, most wrestlers would at this point. Sammy's one of those guys where he's. I think he's going to be one to watch uh, this 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 coming you know Thursday and Friday. He's just really one of the best wrestlers not only in the state but in the nation in terms of when we talk about freshmen, top incoming freshmen. He was our, our number two ranked top incoming freshman for uh, the state of Pennsylvania. So do not be surprised if, if, if Sammy doesn't end up, uh, you know, pulling a fast one here and coming away with not only a medal, maybe even the championship. Really? You like him that much? I was going to ask you that. Uh, I understand the seeding system with Powerade. Uh, a, a guy like Sammy Hillegas, who's a freshman, hasn't doesn't have any big credits to his name and to his varsity career so far. But if you were to rank them just on how you think they would finish, where would you put him in this weight? 
I'd put him top three. I'd probably put him three. I'd probably put Lewis Newell, the uh, one, and Robert Howard two, and, and Sammy Hillegas three, just based on, uh, you know, my my experience in watching him wrestle and compete, uh, looking at some some quality results that he has on the off season, um, and, and as a youth wrestler, I, I mean, obviously, I'm really big on him, um, but. That's not to say that I mean this is this is make or break. I mean I you know we've seen freshmen come from the unseated position to win. Uh, one most notably is Cody Weirchach when he was uh, at Charlotte Roy. He came from an unseated position to win the 152 pound bracket uh, several years ago. So it's not uncommon, but he's gonna if he's gonna do it, he's gonna get. He's going to get tested. He's going to have, I mean, like I said, in probably the 10 matches that he's wrestled this year, he, I don't think he's gotten out of the second period. He's just pinned everybody. So this is going to be a huge adjustment for him because now he's going to be grinding out four, three matches, seven, six matches, where he's going to have to come from behind. He's going to give up a takedown, um, and it's how he reacts after getting taken down, um, you know, and, and getting ridden out a little bit. How is how is he going to respond to that? So, uh, but I'm obviously I'm I'm pretty big on him, so I'd, I'd like to see him do well. But um, he's just one of of many guys at, at 113 that uh, are, are going to make some noise. Chase Shields from Bishop McDevitt, he's a sophomore. He's he was sixth in the state last year as a freshman. Uh, he's currently ranked second in the state. He's unseated. So I mean, a guy like Chase Shields, a state place winner, is not in the top eight. So I mean, that just shows you how deep 13 is. Yeah, you got a couple other state qualifiers in there that aren't seated. You got Brady Sittinger from uh, Erie Prep. You've got Wyatt Lutz from uh, Montoursville, Jacob Downing from North Allegheny, so, and uh, and Derek Christie from Westmont Hilltop. So definitely a lot of guys in there. There's so much depth, as you said. Uh, you're you're not going to get an easy match. I mean, maybe a first round match, but by the time you get to the second round, you're facing guys that are, are state qualifier level. Yeah, I mean, 13 is one of those matches where you said not even the first round is going to be easy. I might, I mean, just 13 is one of those round of 32 where you're like, hey, you better get down there and watch that match because it's going to be it's going to be a good one uh, with with the amount of competition, especially how when they do the draws. Um, Brady Sherback from Gray Latrobe, um, I'm big on him. He's he's a junior, he's ranked 15th in the state. G.J. Ward from Freedom, he's a sophomore, ranked fifth in the state in Double A. Um, and, and Jacob Downing, a guy you mentioned, uh, very, very big on him. He beat Darren Miller uh, at the Eastern Area Open. He, he beat him in the finals. Um, he's a guy from North Allegheny. He was a state qualifier a year ago and is currently ranked fifth in the state. So uh, he, he's a guy who I think is going to compete with, with these top these top names. And, um, yeah, 13 is really deep, and I really like it a lot, uh, especially with that younger talent with Sammy Hillegas, uh, Robert Howard from Bergen Catholic. Uh, we're starting to see the future a little bit, uh, especially with some upperclassmen such as Jacob Dunlop and, and Keelan Kunselman. So it, it should be a fun one at 13. Absolutely. Uh, can't wait to see. As you said, you don't have to, to wait until a semifinals or finals to see a great match up there. Uh, you can definitely see them in the quarters and even earlier. Yeah, I would say uh, Powerade's the, the best matches are definitely the, the quarterfinals and semifinals uh, and the finals, obviously. But uh, when we talk about just the, the head to head matchups, I mean, I just I mean, I can. I can recall just many, many, many quarterfinals and semifinals that just were, were epic. Um, but 120, mainly <laughs> a lot of the talk of the town, even, you know, even out this way, Eric, uh, talk of the town is, is 120 and, and the old and the new. Uh, not saying Gavin T's old, but he's in 11th <laughs> grade. Um, has done everything under the sun. He's, he's the undefeated uh, state champion, two-time state champion for Jefferson Morgan. Uh, currently ranked number one in the state at 126, but he is dropping. Um, I knew he was either going to go up or go down, but uh, he, he did go down to 120, where he is the top seed coming to defend his his Powerade championship. He's a two-time Powerade champion, but he's got a really nice freshman sitting at number two. Yeah, this is the one that uh, if I had one match to pick out that I'm most looking forward to in this tournament, and it's it's this one, uh, Bo Bartlett from Wyoming Seminary and Gavin Teasdale, that's assuming they make it to the finals. And as you said, I mean, in a tournament like this, that's no guarantee by any means. But they're both ranked nationally. Gavin is uh, is ranked number one by Flo and Intermat. And Bo Bartlett, even though he's a freshman, is already ranked fifth by both Flo and Intermat. So uh, top five potential match up there and as you said the the established guy 
Gavin unbeaten in his his varsity career and the the young guy Bo Bartlett coming up. So this is this one's got a lot of people salivating over it. Yeah, both these guys are already making national headlines. I mean, Bo, we saw at the Ironman, he came away with the championship at 120. I thought he looked really good, uh, really just took a beating in the finals in terms of his face. He was getting, you know, he was getting hit hard, and he, he took it like a champ. I interviewed him afterwards. He had a, a almost a swollen black eye, and he was like, yeah, I love it. I want to do it again. Uh, I was like, well, guess what? You're going to be able to do it at Powerade. <laughs> so, um, you know, I didn't know necessarily that Gavin Teasdale was going to be there at his weight, but... Bo is one of those guys, and we we had uh, head coach Scott Green on on the show a few weeks about uh, back, and and he said he loves him. He just loves the way his he works, his work ethic. Um, so here's a chance for Bo to, to say, you know, I I could he could potentially give Gavin Teasdale his first career loss. I mean, um, again, Gavin's the established one. He, he's he's but you know we we saw him go down at, at who's number one, and um, it's not out of the question, but. Uh, I think if this match happens, it, it's, it's going to be one of the top matches. And I'm excited to talk to Frank Volcano about this and see what his thoughts are. But as you said, it's not a guarantee. Looking at the third seed is Logan Macri, uh, who, who's made some, some big headlines, especially down at the Super 32 when he was competing at 113. We were able to see him down there. Logan's a guy who doesn't have a, a state medal to his name. He's, a, uh, he's like again, he's the third seed. He was, he's ranked eighth in the state. Um, a, a, a overall, and he's was six last year at the Powerade. So, not a guy necessarily who has all the accolades, but definitely a guy who can threaten those top seeded guys. Yeah, and there, there are so many more as we see in every weight. But uh, you got Vincent DeStefanis at uh, from Hempfield, a state place winner. You've got Gavin Park from Brookville, a state place winner. Then a couple uh, uh, California state qualifier, and then also Cole Roan from Benton, a state qualifier. So there's definitely enough depth in there that if you're not quite to where you should be or, or wrestling your A game, there's a potential to get knocked off. Yeah, I like both those wrestlers, uh, Vincent DeStefanis and Gavin Park. Both are seniors, um, and both were state place winners last year as juniors. So um, looking forward to seeing those seniors go at it. Cole Roan as well, as you mentioned, Ben, another program who always seems to be, uh, you know, churning out some of the top wrestlers in the, in the state. Um, a freshman that I really like, I got to see at the King Mountain, is Tyler Martin from Bish McDevitt. He's ranked 17th in the state currently at 120 pounds, and I, I like the way he wrestles. Those Bish McDevitt freshmen are, have really impressed me. Yeah, I wasn't able to get out there to, to see that, but the people that I've talked to, uh, he was one of the, the first names that popped up in terms of, of guys that impressed them there that, you know, really making a name for himself. So definitely interested to see him in action. Uh, and, and then there are plenty more guys throughout the weight that, that can make some noise. Yeah, Colton Camacho from Franklin Regional is a sophomore. He's ranked 18th in the state. Last year was the first the time I really got to see him compete uh, in high school, and I thought he looked great. I think he had a win over Nick Coy. Um, really, really grinded out some some tough matches. He uh, got injured last year before the postseason, so was unable to compete. But here's a guy who at 120 as a sophomore, definitely looking to make a name. Uh, Matt Siska from Kiski area made the drop to 120. Um, he, he was he was ranked 24th in the state at 132 pounds, but now with the two pounds, he's down to 120, uh, weighing in at 122. So um, I'm excited to see him as a senior. I think he's underrated uh, big time in, in the state overall, and I think he'll he'll uh, surprise a few people. And then of course you got some some other younger guys. Kenny Kaiser from Sagertown. He's a he's a freshman, also on our top incoming freshman list. Uh, got to see him at, at King of the Mountain. He grinded out uh, several good matches. Uh, definitely some notable wins. And Andrew Ishko from Reynolds is a sophomore. Uh, both these guys can, can make some noise and, and get themselves up in the state rankings. Yeah, so uh, 120, uh, definitely a fun weight to to look at there. And then 126, uh, well, we got one big marquee name. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of, of talent at 126, but I think the guy at the top is going to kind of overshadow all of them. Yeah, I mean, Spencer Lee is looking for his, his third championship title, and, and like Gavin before him, he's undefeated state champion, uh, just really has done it all. Um, there's not really much more to say other, about Spencer Lee other than, uh, you know, he's he's looking to get back to his his game with that third uh, power rate championship. He was unable to wrestle last year due to that, that labrum injury. Um, he, he won the Ironman. Uh, obviously, we, we talked about that over Joey Silva from Florida, and he, and he was pushed. Yeah, he was, but... 
Um, you know, I don't. I, I think this road's actually a little bit easier for him. I'm not taking any, anything away from Jack Davis, who's the, the second seed. Uh, Jack Davis was a national prep champ. He's a he's an 11th grader. He's a second seed, um, and he was third last year at the Powerade. He currently is ranked 20th in the nation by Flow and 17th by Intermat. So clearly, this is a guy who who's uh, is one of the best in the nation. But when we're talking about Spencer Lee, it's it's a different story. Yeah, unless you're a top five guy, and even then, it, it's hard for those guys. I mean, Joey Silva did it. Uh, I know Spencer was pushed a couple of times at Ironman, but his everything he's shown us throughout his career is that he's going to go out there and, and tech or, or pin just about everybody he faces. Yeah, 126 is a weight where the only three wrestlers from Pennsylvania are uh, in the top eight seated. Um, at, uh, at 126, Noah Levitt, a junior from Kiski, he's the seventh seed. He was sixth last year in the state. He's currently ranked third in the state at 126 pounds. Did not get on the, the medal stand last year. Uh, I know he's he's looking to, to get through there um, this year. So uh, definitely some, some outsiders, some names here. Carmen uh, Ferrenti from Bergen Catholic. Uh, he's, he's the fourth seed. A guy I like and I got to see before, Daniel Planta from St. Paul's. He's a senior. He's a third seed. He was a state champion last year. And he was a fourth-place finisher at the Powerade a year ago. So uh, a guy with some experience under his belt, um, You know, definitely a guy who, who's, who's been through it all. He was sixth at the Beast of the East a few weeks ago. And, and Carmen Ferenti of Bergen Catholic, he was eighth at the Beast of the East. So not the first big tournament of the season for some of these guys. Yeah, when you're facing those guys, uh, at St. Paul's, Bergen Catholic, some of these schools, I mean, they've been to these big events. Nothing they see here is going to, to throw them too much, but Spencer Lee is still different than, than what you're seeing anywhere else. Yeah, there's, there's no question about that. Uh, some other big names in here uh, at the 126 bracket. Nick Coy from Penn Trafford, who we talked about. Uh, he's a sophomore. Last year was a state qualifier. He's currently ranked eighth in the state. He won the King of the Mountain last last couple of weeks ago, uh, and he's he's not in the top eight. Um, that that again that shows you how deep it is. I'm surprised that he's not down to 120 yet, uh, because I'm I'm sure he is going to go down to 120. But I'm surprised he's not there yet. Uh, 126 also is Gage Bayless from from Reynolds, who is ranked seventh in the state uh, for for Reynolds at 126. And Noah Myers from Mifflin County. He was state seventh last year. Definitely not as many wins as he wants to under uh, quite yet this season. He's he's took a few losses uh, in his senior season, having that bullseye on his back, having uh, been a state medalist. Tyler McKinney from Cathedral Prep up in Erie. He's a junior state qualifier. He's ranked 14th at 132 pounds, so he made the drop in. Uh, Gabe Akita from Sierra Cliff. He's a senior, ranked 14th in the state. So, Again, maybe not as much depth as, as we've seen in some of the earlier weights, but definitely some, some uh, excitement at the top with Spencer, with Spencer Lee. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I'd turn out to watch Spencer Lee wrestle no matter who, who he's facing, but you have the potential for a Jack Davis, a Daniel Planta, somebody like that. I mean, that's, that's definitely worth your money. Uh, yeah, and, and moving up to 132, there's the only weight with two returning Powerade champions. Uh, here we have two returning champions, Jake Regal from Wyman Seminary, uh, former PIAA state champion at Becca. Uh, he's been at Wyman Seminary. He is the top seed. He um, finished fifth in the nation last year uh, at National Preps. He won the Powerade Championship last year, uh, beat Cole Matthews in the finals, which is which is a great match. I thought he wrestled really tough. The the second champion, Powerade champion, is Job Chisco. Uh, Job is is uh, a junior. And he's the third seed. He finished seventh in the state last year. He's ranked tenth in the state, and he was a Powerade Championship uh, champion at 106. So he's make again. He's making that leap. Yeah, and that's difficult to do. Uh, he's you know he he's got a. It's going to be a different road this time. Put it that way. Uh, at 132 than it was last year at 106. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And surprisingly, no one from uh, no one's ranked in the nation at 132 pounds uh, by Flo or Intermat. But uh, Jake Regal's obviously with the returning uh, championship. He's the top seed. Quincy Mundy from uh, Carboro, North Carolina, as a junior, he's a second seed. Quincy is is obviously the son of Kenny Mundy, who we. Uh, you know, we know all all his accomplishments, and he was a, a state champion last year, um, I believe, in Texas, because Quincy and the I think they moved. 
from Texas to North Carolina when, when Kenny took the uh, assistant uh, coaching position at North Carolina with Coleman Scott. So, uh, But he was fourth last year at the Powerade. So you got three top four finishers from the Powerade returning. Um, Mark Garofalo from Colonial Forge, he's a senior. He's a four seed. He's a state champion. I swear they, there's, there was 19 of those Garofalos <laughs> from Colonial Forge. I'm pretty sure one wrestled when I, I competed in the Powerade uh, 10 years ago. So um, obviously another guy to keep an eye on. Hunter Baxter from Pine Richland, a two-time state medalist. He's a senior. He's a sixth seed. He was fourth last year in the state. He's ranked third in the state currently, and he finished sixth at the Powerade. So uh, another guy who just really grinds out some matches, really um, is, is consistent. So um, his counterpart, Caleb Morris, these guys have battled. Uh, he's he's the seventh seed. He's a junior from Waynesburg. He is uh, was a state qualifier. Uh, twice before he's ranked ninth in the state and he finished seventh at the power rate a year ago uh so some nice nice uh quality here from from pennsylvania but um definitely you know looking forward to jake regal seeing if he can get back on top of the the podium because last year i don't think a lot of people were expecting him to beat cole matthews no i i wasn't uh that's that's a surprise to me and I don't know. It'll be interesting this year to see, you know, how does a Quincy Monday do? You know, we talked about Joe Chisco before being so much heavier this year than, than last. I don't really have a great feel for this one. Uh, I, I think Regal's probably the favorite, but after that, I'm not really sure. Yeah, and, and just looking down through the, the rest of the wrestlers here that, that aren't in the top eight, Bodie Tolbert from Bishop McDevitt is a junior. He's ranked 24th in the state. Uh, Dante Constable from Brookville is a junior. He's not ranked. He's, he's off the radar, but I think he could, could surprise a few people. Um, and then you look at a guy like Matty Oblock from Cannon Mac. He's a senior wrestling in his home gym. He's ranked 13th in the state. Matty is one of those guys where he's always been knocking on the door, just hasn't gotten in yet. And I think uh, if, if the time is, is to make his senior season worthwhile, I think it's now. Uh, he's a guy, highly uh, ranked incoming freshman, um, hasn't made it to the state tournament yet, coming out of the, the Whippeal, but is a guy who I think could potentially make some noise, So, um, especially being in his home gym. Yeah, as you said, uh, in his home gym there, some of these Cannon Mac guys have been known to do that throughout the years, uh, have a nice showing here at their home gym. Josh McLaughlin from Cedar Cliff, he's a senior. He's ranked 19th in the state. Um, a, a couple freshmen that I, I'm looking forward to seeing is uh, – Marquise McLaurin from Cathedral Prep. He's down at 132. He's a freshman. He was in our top incoming freshman. And Jack Bloomer from Kiski area. Jack Bloomer, I saw when they wrestled against um, uh, Cannon Mac this earlier last week. I uh, was able to go to that match. And uh, Jack gave Matt Oblock all he could handle. He, he almost won that match. He uh, He's a pretty solid freshman for, for himself at, at 132. So, uh, looking forward to seeing how he competes. Luke Landefeld from North Allegheny, another guy who's been around for for seems like eight years. Um, he's a senior state qualifier. He's ranked twelfth in the state. Hunter Michaels from Reynolds, a junior state qualifier, ranked ninth in the state. So a ton of talent just overall. Uh, I, bring, I think Pennsylvania's got some good uh, depth here at one thirty two. Yeah, there's there's definite depth there. Uh, it, it's not quite the high end talent that we see at some of the other ways, but there's uh, there's enough depth there to make it for an interesting weight class. At 138, we got three wrestlers ranked in the nation that will be competing. Uh, the top seed is Josh Humphreys from St Albans, West Virginia. He's an 11th grader. He's the top seed. He was a state champion last year for uh, for St Albans. He was first at the Powerade a year ago. Uh, he's ranked 19th in the nation by flow and 17th by intermat. So here's a guy who was already on top of the podium before uh, looking at it back there. Yeah, and he'll certainly be tested here, as you said, a couple other guys that are ranked nationally, one being uh, a guy that you just mentioned at the last weight class, uh, Cole Matthews, was a runner-up a year ago. Now uh, he'll get that chance again to uh, to go for a Power 8 title. Uh, he's ranked second in the state, was third in the state last year, but he's sixth in the nation, uh, according to Flo, and 12th by Intermat. So two guys that are, are pretty high up there in the, the national rankings. Yeah, I'm a big Cole Matthews fan. Watching him scramble at the Ironman was incredible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did, saw that. I saw that on the, the, on the internet, the, and that the, was 
the two just minute ridiculous. the two minute scramble by Cole Matthews just I mean seriously the kid's insane the way he I'm like oh he's getting taken down oh wait no he's he's now getting now he's getting the takedown um, Josh Humphreys won last year the power rate at 120 pounds beating uh, Charlie Lennox in the finals um, so he's up a, a few weight classes uh, Cole Matthews is up one weight class he was in, in the finals. Um, I'm sorry, he's up two weight classes. He was in the finals last year against Jake Regal at 126 pounds. So, um, and, and again, Cole Matthews was an Ironman runner-up, definitely in that match. Um, so someone who to, is looking to get over that hump and, and get back to his, his prominence where, you know, he was a state champion as a freshman. So um, he was in, obviously, that loaded weight class last year. Um, but another guy is, is Brandon Ramos from Lockport. He's a senior. He's a third seed. He's a state qualifier. He was fifth last year at the Powerade. Um, and I think that's probably why he got the bump ahead of Gerard Angelo from Bergen Catholic, who is a junior. He's the fourth seed. Was third at the state tournament last year in New Jersey. He is ranked 18th in the nation by Flow and 15th by Intermat. So, again, you sound like a broken record, but those Bergen Catholic guys, I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty solid. Yeah. And you mentioned something that uh, if people don't know the, the way the, the seeds go in this, they put a lot of weight on Powerade finish last year. So in some cases that'll trump what you've done in, in, a, in another state tournament, you know, in a, a North Carolina or a West Virginia or somewhere, because it's so hard to judge those that they take and, and say, okay, if you were a Powerade last year, then we know what that means. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And we'll, we'll, when we talk to Frank, we may mention that just about the seating. But um, Gerard Angelo, who we talked about from Burn Catholic, he was a beast of the East runner up a few weeks back, uh, the junior was. So, uh, I, couple guys that i'm looking forward to seeing is luke kemmer from hempfield uh junior who was he's the sixth seed he's currently ranked um he's second in the state but he was third in the state a year ago uh did not get on the podium last year as a sophomore for for hempfield he's a guy who i think needs to have a good tournament just to to solidify himself as one of the top guys in, in the state at 138 pounds i'm looking forward to seeing how how he does and then zach ortman from parkland here's a guy who didn't even make it to regionals last year he was a sixth place finisher in the District 11 tournament. He comes in as a seven seed, um, and again, uh, as we talked about, Eric, he was fifth in the Powerade last year. So that's why he, he's he's in the top eight. He was a, he didn't make it the regionals, but he finished fifth in Powerade. So Zach Ortman is uh, your seventh seed at 138 pounds. And I mean, he's got a lot of competition to to stay in that top eight. I mean, there are quite a few more guys that that are not ranked or not seated here, but have the potential to be on the podium. Yeah, Ortman comes in ranked 23rd in the state um, it, it currently right now at 138 pounds. Some other guys, Cornell Andrews from Bishop McCourt, uh, junior, who is a state qualifier. He's currently ranked fifth in the state. We saw him; he had the injury default at the King or, King of the Mountain. Uh, I hope he's he's healthy and ready to go at 138 because he's going to surprise a few people if, if he is healthy. Um, Jaden Johnson from Bishop McDevitt, who's a senior. Uh, Tim Hursko from Cannon McMillan, junior, ranked 11 in the state. Uh, he's he's I saw him wrestle against Kiski and he won in overtime over Cam Connor. Uh, he he looked great. So uh, definitely looking forward to seeing uh, Tim wrestle in his home gym. And you mentioned Cam Connor. He's also there, ranked 17th. And then you've also got Garrett Burnham from Pine Richland, who's ranked 19th. Yeah, uh, just uh, another, just the names continue on. And uh, Colton Babcock from Benton, he's ranked 18th in the state. Uh, you also got Zach Stedford from North Allegheny, who's not ranked in the state, but uh, definitely has, has been close to getting in that, that top 25 ranking. So 38, definitely looking forward to seeing if Cole Matthews can avenge his his, I know he has to be still salty about that Ironman finish, so it'd be nice to see if he can get on top of the podium at, uh, at Powerade, but he's going to have to get through a Powerade champion to do, show, do so. Yeah, and as we talked about, uh, your fourth seed is, uh, is ranked 15th in the nation by Intermat, so definitely some top-end talent in this one. And it doesn't get any easier up at 145. And two of the, I, I think, battle of the last names here <laughs> at, at 145 is... Uh, Frankie Gissendanner from Penfield, New York, is the top seed. And Jared Verkleeren from Hempfield area uh, is the second seed. So obviously everyone knows Jared Verkleeren, uh, state medalist 
formerly of Bell Vernon, now at Hempfield. He drops down to 145, where I think he's he's going to look good. Uh, he was a Super 32 champion at 145, and uh, he, he was he's he's currently ranked second in the state. He was fourth last year at Powerade uh, in a really loaded bracket, uh, in my opinion. Um, he's he's ranked third in the nation by Flow and second in the nation by Intermat. So. Pretty impressive uh, resume for Jared. I'm surprised he didn't get the top seed uh, over Frankie Gissendanner, who is uh, making his first appearance um, at the uh, Powerade Tournament. But he is he's making a drop as well. He was ranked ninth in the nation by Intermat at 152 pounds, so he'll be making his season debut at 145. This might be the deepest weight class from top to bottom. Uh, you've got two ranked guys, so there's definitely some, some high talent there. And then... The, the depth of this weight class is just incredible. The the matchups you're going to see here, as we said before, in the, in the round of 16, round of 32, I mean, you're going to see some really quality guys going at it early. Oh, my gosh. Talk. I mean, the depth of 145, in my opinion, is the deepest weight class uh, of, of all weights, uh, just based on, on my, my, my opinion. But uh, Joey Bloomer from Kiski Area, Penn State recruit, he's, he's the third seed. He was a, a state qualifier, owns a state medal to his name. He's ranked eighth in the state, was fourth last year at Powerade. So he was fourth, so was Verk Learen. Then you got Jake Hinkson from North Allegheny, who's a senior going to Kent State. He's the fourth seed, was sixth in the state. He's a two-time state medalist, currently ranked third in the state. Uh, he was sixth at Powerade a, a year ago. Then you got John Pippa from Bishop McDevitt, the two-time PIAA state runner-up. He is the sixth seed. Uh, he's ranked second in the state. Uh, I'm sorry, he's ranked third in the state, was, was a two-time state runner-up, and uh, he finished eighth at the Powerade a year ago. So right off the bat, that, that one through six. Oh, and then, of course, add in <laughs> Cody Kamara. Oh, yeah, let's not forget Cody. So Cody with a K from Freedom. He's a senior. He's a seventh seed. He's, he was uh, third last year uh, in the state tournament, he was, he's, and he's currently ranked number one in the state. So not too shabby for, for Cody. Yeah, whenever that's your your eight seed or your seven seed, that's a deep weight class. And then and let's let's just continue on. The list goes on and on. So Michael Stewart from Benton, senior, seventh in the state last year, and he is currently ranked fifth in the state. He is your unseated wrestler at 145. But then there's several other ones, and Justin McCoy, Justin McCoy, who owns <laughs> a win over John Pippa. Uh, we saw- yeah, you were really impressed by him. Uh, at- King of the Mountain. I, I was, and even though he didn't win in the finals against Brock Port, I was very impressed with the way Justin battled. Uh, I, I, re- I got the chance to sit down with him and talk with him on the podcast. Really nice, mature young man, um, and, and so is John Pippa. John Pippa is, I, I've known for, for quite a number of years, and he's a very talented young person as well. So uh, Justin McCoy, he was seventh in the state uh, a season ago. He is currently ranked second in the state at 145. He's unseated, so who knows where he's going to get ended? Up, you know, end up on the bracket based on that draw. Um, again, Michael Stewart was a state place winner, um, unseated. Chase Houck from Reynolds is a senior. He was eighth in the state last year. is uh, is currently ranked seventh in the state. He's unseated. So, talk about just the depth here, Eric. I mean, wow! Look at these some of these names that are, are going to be battling in. Uh, you know, round of thirty-two. Well, think about that. How'd you like to draw a Justin McCoy or a Michael Stewart that early on since they aren't seated? I mean, you could hit them really early, and they're guys that, that certainly can take out any number of these top eight guys. Well, they're definitely going to meet some of these guys really early. I mean, if it's not the round of, of 32, it's the round of 16, you're, you're battling. I mean, that's what I love about Powerade. Every match is a grind. There's there's no easy matches here at Powerade. Um, it's very few if there are any. So, um Jude Maddox from Sagertown, he's ranked 16th in the state. I think he could make some noise. Uh, Corey Christian Burrell um, and Tyler Saliga from, from Bell Vernon. Now, this is interesting because we're going to see some Bell Vernon guys here that just – I don't know if they ate too much over Christmas or, or what the plan is, but uh, Tyler Saliga he, from Bell Vernon, he's a senior. He was ranked 22nd in the state at 132 pounds. He's up to 145 pounds. <laughs> So I, again, I'm, uh, I'm I'm not even touching Bell Vernon and weights at this point after last year. Okay, uh, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I'm I'm staying away from it altogether. I mean, I don't know if it's because you know Zach Hartman and, and Jared Verkleeren didn't run a wrestle or what, but uh, we're going to see at 160 Hartman bumps up from 145 to 160. 
but we'll, we'll hold our horses and talk about that in a second. So overall, 145, very, very, very deep weight class. Uh, when we look at just the, the quality of wrestlers here, um, it, it's pretty impressive. A lot of names that, that just are, are synonymous with, with success. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing how the chips fall uh, at 145. Yeah, really, really deep. Uh, you're going to want to watch every round there, no doubt. And 152 is arguably right up there with, with 145 because if you look at the national level, you got three guys ranked top 10 in the nation by both <laughs> major syndicates. Um, go ahead, Eric. Oh, that's just crazy. Look at it. According to Intermat, you've got the number two ranked guy in Cam Coy, the number five ranked guy in Stephen, Stephen Glasgow from Boundbrook, New Jersey, and the number eight ranked guy in Shane Griffith from Bergen Catholic. So you've got three of the top eight guys in one high school tournament. I mean, this isn't this isn't Super 32. This isn't the, these national tournaments. I mean, to have three guys in the top eight in one high school gym is incredible. Yeah, uh, you're, you're right, Eric. And, uh, you know, leading that pack is Cam Coy. And, you know, Cam's got a daunting task in front of him. Uh, I was able to talk to him at King of Mountain, and he seems pretty relaxed, pretty pretty uh, good to go. He had a little bit of a neck injury. Um, he's, he's comfortably at 152, uh, where we've seen him compete for, for a number of uh, weeks now. Um, he, he's the number one seed. He's a, a two-time state champion. He's ranked number one in the state. He's a Powerade champion. Um, as you said, Flo and Internet, uh, Intermat both have them number two in the nation. So, but that that's not going to be any easy a, a cakewalk for for Cam. Um, he he won last year in the finals. He beat Makai Lewis. Um, but he's going to have some other tough guys from Jersey, with, like you said, with with uh, Stephen Glasgow and, and Shane Griffith. So uh, Shane Griffith last last week or, or two weeks ago was a runner up at the Beast. Uh, the Bergen Catholic wrestler uh, finished second at the BCE. So um, obviously some, some top quality guys nationally. Uh, and not, let's not forget about the guys from Pennsylvania. Yeah, I hope, uh, just, just to go back to it for a second, I hope that Cam is 100% with the neck because, I mean, man, if you're not 100%, this is a brutal bracket. It's going to be crazy even if you are 100%. But for his sake, I hope he is. Hope he can go out and, and wrestle his best and, and see how he can match up against some of these guys. I do believe in talking to Cam. He's 100%, and he wouldn't go if he wasn't. He, he's he's ready to go. It's just precautionary at the King of Mountain. So uh, I, I do believe we'll see a, a full throttled cam cam coy coming your way so uh looking at the other guys in the top eight here carter archie from uh cathedral prep uh he's a guy who was our one of our top incoming freshmen last year as a freshman uh he finished eighth in the state last year he's the fifth seed um he's sixth in the state right now at 160 currently but he like i said he drops down to 152 so carter's one of those guys who uh is going to look to to compete with those top quality a uh, little bit older wrestlers brock godson from bel Vernon. he's a junior he's the sixth seed and he's currently ranked 11th in the state. uh he was seventh last year at power age so um another bel Vernon guy with with some experience under his belt uh, Caleb Hetrick from Brookville area is also a junior. He's a seventh seed. He was eighth in the state last year for Brookville. Uh, he's currently ranked seventh in the state at 160, but of course, Caleb made the drop down to 152. So, um, the round, rounding out those top eight, there's some pretty quality guys here from Pennsylvania with, uh, you know, a handful of, of, of seated wrestlers. Definitely. And then there, uh, you, you talked before about some of the freshmen looking to make an impact. Uh, here, here's the one we've got from, from Cannon McMillan and Garrett Ninehouse. And uh, he's ranked third already in the state. So he can definitely make a name for himself here and knock off some of these top ranked guys. Yeah, he was a, a Cumber Valley kickoff classic winner. He, he defeated two very quality seniors, beating Riley Palmer, uh, who was a King of the Mountain champion. So he, he owns a win over a King of Mountain champion and Will Caldiz. Um and, and Garrett was a uh, eighth place finisher at the Beast of the East a few weeks back against some of these you know some of the best competition. Uh, Shane Griffith, like I said, was second. David Carr was third. Uh, Brock Wilson from Nazareth is, is a guy who he lost to uh, in the early rounds. He was um, fifth, and then of course Bailey Thomas from Good Counsel. Uh, Bailey Thomas was seventh at the BC East. He comes in as the fourth seed uh, as, a, as a national uh, prep champion from, from good counsel. I really like him, the way he wrestles. Um, so Garrett Ninehouse is one of the guys who 
Uh, really was a, a big win for, for the Big Macs against Kiski Area in their dual meet uh, last week. He came away with a pin, getting bumped up to 160. And, boy, he is impressive. I really, really, really like him. Um, I am, I'm, I'm not going to guarantee he gets on the podium. I, I think for sure he's going to get on the podium here at Powerade. So uh, he's going to knock off some big, big names in order to do that. Uh, you talked about Bailey Thomas. Do you think he's he's able to get in that top half? Is he going to be a, a top four guy, or is it more like five, six, seven? You know, I probably probably the five, six, seven, just based on the. I mean, I don't see him getting above those top three guys with Cam, um, Glasgow, and Griffith. I don't I don't see him getting past those three just with the experience uh, based on the Beast of the East uh, results. But I, I definitely can see him getting through Caleb Hedrick, Brock Godson, which is interesting because he and Carter. Uh, Starachi from from Cathedral Prep did a lot of battles as, as youth wrestlers, and I believe the it was the that was the last wrestler uh, Garrett lost to in PJWs in the state finals. I correct, I could be wrong, but uh, I spent enough time digesting PJW results. I should know, um, but Garrett is is just wrestling really really well. Uh, I mean, like I said, having to beat the come the 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 King of the Mountain champion Riley Palmer, um, you know, definitely put some some presence to his his name and i'm looking forward to seeing especially in his home gym i mean this is what they that's what they're made for uh and as i said he's ranked third in the state are there uh there are other guys here that you want to talk about that uh, look like they can make an impact well i'd I'd like the bethel park wrestlers hunter kiernan uh from bethel park he's ranked 17th in the state i think he could get some wins another freshman is nick delt from kiski uh he's ranked 21 in the state uh, at 152 uh, I, I was sort of impressed with him against Cannon Mack. He was really good for a period and a half and then just just sort of gassed out and, uh, you know, gave up some stall points and some caution points. And um, I think if he's, he's, if he's mentally charged up and physically ready to go, I think he could make some noise as a freshman. John Hoover from North Allegheny, a sophomore. Uh, Nick Geyer from Penn, uh, Penn Richland as a senior. So not a, not as much depth as some of the other weights, but talk about the top eight to ten wrestlers in this weight. They're, they're pretty solid. Yeah, whenever you've got three top eight guys in it, I can live without a uh, number fifteen guy. Well, it, yeah, you're you're right, Eric. I guess I guess in looking at the the grand scheme of things, that's probably probably better. But moving up to one hundred and sixty, a guy we talked about, Makai Lewis from Boundbrook. Uh, it's a senior. He's a top seed here. He was a, a state champion in, in Jersey. He was second last year in Powerade. He lost to Cam Coy in the finals. He's ranked ninth by Flow and seventh by Intermat. So uh, one of the top guys in the nation. But again, Bell Vernon, Zach Hartman, we saw him compete at the Ironman at 145 pounds. He's all the way up to 160. So, I mean, really it's 162 with the two pounds. So um, not sure what the angle is here with Zach Hartman going up two weight classes. Uh, he, he's a junior. He's the second seed. Last year, he was a runner-up uh, in the Powerade. He finished second to Tate Ords from Brookville. Um, and he's ranked seventh in the state at 145. So I, it's this is really tough to judge for me for Hartman because you're bumping up significant amounts of weight here. And, and that's got to be difficult mentally to to realize that, hey, I'm going out there and I'm wrestling in one of the toughest tournaments in the nation. And, oh, by the way, I'm going to do it two weight classes above what I was at two weeks ago. Yeah, so like I said, I'm not sure exactly uh, what what the what the plan is here with Zach, but uh, I mean, clearly he's a talented wrestler. Um, but I'm just not sure what the you know with him being up to weight classes, how that's going to be. Um, the third seed's Travell Timmons from Lockport, uh, who's a senior. He was six in the state last year in Illinois, uh, but he was six in the Powerade, um, and he's currently ranked both by Intermat and by Flow. He's he's uh, 15th in the nation. Um, by flow at, at 152 pounds, and he's 10th in the nation by Intermat. So uh, another guy with some national, uh, you know, capabilities to his, to his name. Uh, a guy I like, I thought wrestled tough at, at King Mountain, uh, Morgan Derrimer from Chestnut Ridge. He's a senior. He's a fifth seed. He was sixth in the state. Um, he's currently ranked fifth in the state. Uh, a guy who I, I think could could make some noise. But there's several other names here from outside of Pennsylvania that I also like. Uh, Chris Falka from Bergen Catholic. Again, I mean, just Bergen Catholic is, you might as well just, whoever you're from Bergen Catholic, you're good. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they do okay there. Yeah, they do pretty well. Uh, Drew Dunbar from Parkersburg South, uh, West Virginia. He's a junior. 
Uh, he was a third in states. Um, but some other guys that I, I like outside of the top eight, Jason Montgomery from Bethel Park. He's ranked 14th in the state. Uh, he's a junior. I really like the way uh, he's been wrestling in his first year back after an injury. Kept him out of his sophomore year. Uh, Dean Ward from Freedom, senior, uh, ranks 17th in the state currently. Um, and, and really just overall, these guys are really trying to make a name for themselves. Um, and I look at a guy like Kyle Hallmett from Waynesburg. He's a state qualifier. He's ranked 10th in the state. He's a junior. Um, he didn't have quite the beast of the East that, that I think he wanted, uh, not getting on the podium, but it was a really tough bracket at, at 160. Um, but I think we can see Kyle knock off a few guys and uh, surprise a few people. And then you've got uh, another one that you highlighted here is Darian Roberts from Wyoming Seminary. And I think you could throw them certainly in that mix of if you're on the Wyoming Seminary squad, you're going to be pretty good. Yeah, Darian Roberts is a, is a guy from Pennsylvania. Uh, he, he wrestled last year at uh, East Stroudsburg, um, and he, he transferred to, to Wyman Seminary. Uh, Darian Roberts is one of the top youth wrestlers in, in the state. Uh, several years back, he's a sophomore. So um, I'm, in, I'm curious and, and uh, anxious to see how he is uh, having that Wyman Seminary room in his, in his back pocket now, just wrestling with his toughest guy. So uh, Darian Roberts is definitely a guy who, who could surprise uh, a few people and um, yeah, it's at 160s again. I'm 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 like sort of baffled by the Zach Hartman going up two weight classes. So uh, I'm just not sure how that's going to play out. But outside of that, I mean, it's going to be tough for Pennsylvania to get on the podium here. I I'm really concerned about Pennsylvania getting on the podium here at 160. Yeah, it's uh, the other states, and that's one thing. I mean, there are so many other states that are involved in this that have a, a representative or multiple representative, whether it's Ohio, New Jersey, West Virginia, Virginia. You've got some in Illinois. You've got California. So, I mean, there you're bringing in teams from all over the country to compete in this. So while the, it's still a, a lot of Pennsylvania teams, there are a lot of guys from other states that can come in and do well as well. A guy I love, I really like. He's a, he's a quality wrestler, quality person. It's Trent Hydley from from Mifflin County, uh, junior. He's a top seed here. He was second in the state last year. Was second at Powerade last year. He lost to to uh, Jake Wenzel in the finals of, of uh, Powerade. Um, he lost to Caleb Young in the state finals. He's currently ranked sixth in the nation by Flow and fourth by Intermat. So Trent is a guy who's again trying to get over that hump, trying to match his brother Hayden, who uh, won a Powerade championship. Uh, well, actually, no, he did not. He lost to Mason Manville. I apologize. So he's looking out to his brother uh, to get on to the top of the podium. But he's got a few guys in his way, Eric. Yeah, there are definitely some, uh, some again, some guys from outside of the state. You've got Dale Tiongson from St. Paul's is ranked second or seated second. Uh, and then a, a guy that's ranked 17th in the nation at 182 by Intermat is Abel Garcia from Oakdale, California. He's a senior, was a fourth place winner in California last year. Yeah, so two out of staters that are looking to to make a name for themselves on on Pennsylvania. Uh, a guy I I'm big on is is the four seed Tim Wallace from Albert Gallatin. Uh, he was a state qualifier last year, but was a regional champion. Uh, he's currently ranked third in the state, so he's one behind Trent uh, Hidley. And then another guy who's up big time in weight is is Jared McGill from Chestnut Ridge, who I believe ate another human being to get to where he's at because <laughs> he is huge. Uh, I saw him at King of the Mountain. And I asked him that. I was like, "Man, who did you eat?" Because uh, he, he's just—he's really big uh, from for a freshman to a sophomore year. Uh, he's the fifth seed. He was sixth in the state last year and uh, is currently ranked third in the state. He did not get on the podium last year at, at Powerade, but uh, definitely a guy with some some quality experience. A guy I was very impressed with at Ironman is Gavin Wilkerson from Reynolds. Um, formerly of, of Greenville, but he's a senior. He's a seventh seed. He was a state uh, qualifier last year and is currently ranked seventh in the state. I think he's going to, I think if he can continue on that trend, I think he's going to have a, a, a good tournament as well. Yeah, and you've got quite a few other Pennsylvania guys that, uh, that are ranked in the state. Uh, you want to talk about some of those guys that are also at 170? Yeah, Blaze Kansko from, from Cannon Mac. He's a senior, uh, he's ranked eighth in the state. Uh, has yet to make it to a, a state tournament, but um, or, or get to onto the podium at uh, a Powerade. But he's looking to do so this this year as a senior. Brad Nagy from Kiski area, uh, Kansko and Nagy wrestled in a close close match 
uh, last week. He's ranked 24th in the state. Um, a guy I, I'm big on is Jake Hendricks from Wyoming Seminary. He's up to 170. He's a junior, had a lot of success last year. Uh, so I'm, I'm anxious to see how he does up at, at 170. Uh, Sean Hoover from North Allegheny uh, sort of had some battle some injuries throughout his career, but um, if he's healthy, he's 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 ready to go and um, and make some noise. He was very close to getting on the podium at the Beast of the East. He comes in ranked ninth in the state uh, currently. So guys trying to sort of make a name for themselves, uh, you know, other than, the, you know, Trent Hiley and, and Tim Wallace, Jared McGill, Gavin Wilkerson. Outside of that, there's going to be some guys trying to sneak on the podium um, here at the Bowery. Yeah, and moving up to, to 182, you've got uh, kind of the favorite here is, is a guy we know quite well, Nino Bonacorsi from Bethel Park. Yeah, love Nino. Uh, just great kid, uh, great family. He's the top seed. He was second in the power raid last year, Barely lost to Austin Bell, who actually ended up beating later in the year uh, when it when it mattered most uh, to to finish second in the state. He finished second to Mikey Labriola. He's up to 182. Uh, he was a Super 32 runner up. Um, he's currently ranked number one in the state. He's ranked third in the nation by both Flow and Intermat. So he, I, I think he's he's close to one of the the biggest locks in my opinion. Uh, outside of Spencer Lee to win the championship because the second seed Cody Mulligan is a guy who he wrestled at King of Mountain uh, and 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 beat him. It wasn't it wasn't a by a large margin, but he handled the match. And uh, Cody's a guy who I, no you know I'm not taking anything away from Cody because he's a he's a very talented wrestler. He's a junior. He's a second seed. He was sixth in the state last year. Uh, he's ranked second in the state and was fifth at the Powerade. So two returning Powerade medals here at 182. Yeah, and without knowing some of the other guys, I mean, you've got a, a couple, uh, Jacob Hart from Independence, West Virginia, and a George Walton from Boundbrook, New Jersey, and a, and another West Virginia kid, uh, Hunter DeLong, in the, the top eight seeds. But I agree with you. It, it's hard to see, uh, unless Nino doesn't wrestle his best match. If he wrestles his best, I, I think he's he's the pretty clear-cut favorite in this weight. Another guy that we saw at King of the Mountain, Matt McGillick from Penn Trafford. Uh, he's the fourth seed. He was a state qualifier, ranked ninth in the state. He was sixth at Powerade. So actually there's four returning Powerade medalists from a year ago. George Walton um, from Boundbrook uh, also was a seventh-place medalist a season ago. Uh, Joel uh, Lisi from Reynolds, another guy I was impressed with at Ironman. Uh, he was a medalist at Ironman. He's a senior. Uh, he was, he's a sixth seed. He was a state qualifier and is currently ranked fourth in the state. Um, so, again, Reynolds and Brookville are going to have two guys. Noah uh, Seleski from Brookville, he's a senior. He's the eighth seed state qualifier, currently ranked fifth in the state. So i um, like to see Reynolds and Brookville do battle because they they're just so happen to be the two top teams ranked in the state in double A. Yeah, and there, you can see from looking at the seedings here why they're uh, ranked that highly. Now, outside of that, there's not a whole lot. I don't, I, I don't have a whole lot highlighted or, or, or you know, noted here. Um, Emerson Wentz from Cedar Cliff drops down from 195 to 182. He was ranked 25 in the state. Uh, he's a senior from from Cedar Cliff. Uh, Frank Guida from Parkland. Uh, he's a senior. He's ranked fifth in the state. Uh, he's competed in the Powerade before. I think he's a guy who who could sneak onto the podium. Um, but outside of that, not not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. That's okay. We we make up for it at 195. Uh, yeah, we do, Eric. Yeah, we do because 195 just so happens to be the weight class where there's one, two, three, four. I think I count four state champions in one bracket. Three of which. Um, are from Pennsylvania. So, uh, oh, yeah, and let's throw in a runner-up for good measure, too. Yeah, yeah, sure, why not? So top seed, Jake Woodley, North Allegheny. He's a senior. Uh, he was a state champion last year in his first trip to the, the Hershey uh, Giant Center. He's currently ranked number one in the state. He was second at the Powerade a season ago. Uh, as I mentioned uh, a few weeks ago at the, the um, during the Beast of the East, would Jake Woodley be upset or he defeated, got avenged uh, a loss from the, the power eight a year ago, beating Brandon Koo from DePaul Catholic. He beat him in the semifinals, and he was a runner-up. Jake was at the, the Beast of the East. Uh, Gavin Hoffman from Montoursville. 
He's a junior. He's a second seed. He was a state champion last year. He's ranked number one in the state. Uh, last year, he was fifth at Power Rate. Now, these two did not wrestle in the same weight, uh, but they both did wrestle down at the Super 32. And speaking of not at the same weight, your guy Cole Nye yeah. is uh, down from 220 to 195. Yeah, yes, he is. And in that match, I shall mention, uh, Gavin and, and uh, Jake, when they wrestled at Super 32, uh, Gavin Hoffman did win that match. Um, and it, w- it was a tight match. And, and Jake was just getting used to the 195 uh, frame uh, and, and wrestling. But Cole Nye, who we saw was a runner-up at Super 32 at 220, he's down to 195 this year. He's a King of Mountain champion. Uh, he's the third seed, was a state champion last year for Bish McDevitt. He's currently ranked second in the state, so he's one behind Gavin Hoffman, uh, even though he is undefeated in the season. He was seventh at Powerade. Um, And all three of these guys are are ranked in the nation. So uh, Jake Woodley's ranked sixth in the nation by flow, uh, eighth by Intermat. Gavin Hoffman's ranked fourth in both flow and Intermat. So Gavin's ranked the highest of all uh, with that fourth fourth ranking uh, in the nation. And then Cole Nye's ranked 19th by flow and 14th by Intermat. So three quality guys. And then, like you said, just throw in some more names. Um, let's just say Colin McCracken for, for good measure. Uh, Waynesburg Central. He's a senior. He's a fourth seed. He was seventh in the state last year. Uh, he's currently ranked third in the state. Was sixth at the Power Rangers season ago. He gave Jake Woodley all he could handle at the Beast of the East. Uh, Woodley beat him in overtime, sudden victory, uh, getting a takedown to, to win that. So, obviously, he's right up there with the, the best of them. And then there's a guy named Anthony Waters, too, Eric. Yeah, Bishop McCourt uh, Jr., he state runner-up last year. Uh, hurt probably in the seating here by the fact that he did not place at Powerade last year. I think those were his only two losses going into the state tournament uh, last year. But he's your, your fifth seed there. So not bad whenever you've got Anthony Walters, a uh, state runner-up at the fifth seed. Yeah, that just shows how, how tough that Powerade tournament is. His only two losses going into the state tournament were at Powerade. Um, and he's a guy who did not place a power, but finishes second in the state. So uh, pretty impressive. Um, the eighth seed is Noah uh, Cashelman. I believe that's how you say Cash- Cashelman from St. Paul's, Maryland. He's a senior. He's the eighth seed. He was <laughs> a state champion for St. Paul's. So, um, yeah, some pretty, pretty impressive uh, guys here at 195. Definitely very, very, very top heavy. Yeah, whenever you can get an eighth seed with a state title under his belt, that's a, a pretty difficult weight class. I'm very, very excited to see this because I, I do think we're going to see a, a Jake Woodley, Gavin Hoffman rematch from the Super 32. Um, you know, I, I'm I think that's that's probably the way it's going to pan out. Cole Nye's been very close to getting knocked off this year. Uh, when he turns it on, when he's mentally ready to go, he, he's he's tough to beat. But um, you know, I. He doesn't impress, but he, what you said, he's tough to beat. He's great. I mean, yeah, there aren't he, many guys that yeah, beat him. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't impress you. He doesn't go out there and tech guys in, in a minute and a half, but he's tough to score on. He is. He's very, very good defensively uh, wrestling, and he's not he's not known for his offense, but he has a good offense when he when he wants to. So, um, again, I, I, I think that it's going to be a, a, a really fun weight to watch, sort of like we said with all uh, 120, 126. Uh, this is definitely one. Uh, I'm going to be circling to, to watch some other guys. Xavier Molner from Brookville, uh, junior. He's ranked 16th in the state. Nate Ansel from Collinsville, former of Laurel Highlands. He's a junior, ranked 24th in the state. Mike Hughes from Erie Prep uh, is a senior, ranked 10th in the state. And Jared Miller from Reynolds uh, is a junior, ranked 22nd in the state. So more so the top part is 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 where the, the meat of it is, um, not so much on the, the, uh, the rest of the field, but definitely uh, a, a weight that we're going to play. Pay co- close attention to. Yeah, I can't wait to see some of those uh, quarterfinal and semifinal matchups there. Not so much the the sixteen and thirty two, but it'll be worth the wait when we get to those. And moving up to two hundred twenty pounds, the top seed here is Noah Adams from Independence, West Virginia. He's a top seed. He's a senior. Uh, was a state champion. He's ranked pretty high in the nation he's ranked second in the nation by flow and fourth in the nation by intermat so i think no adams here is a clear favorite but there's a guy like francis dugan from cedar cliff who, who's uh, a pretty solid wrestler in his own right he's a two-time state medalist uh finishing seventh last year he's the second seed uh he's currently ranked number one in the state at 220 he finished third at the power aid last year 
Um, and he's ranked sixth in the nation by flow and seventh by intermatch. So these two are, are very, very tough uh, wrestlers. Um, and then there's another junior here by the name of Josiah Jones. Yeah, Josiah Jones uh, was sixth at Powerade last year, second in the state, lost to uh, Cole Nye in the finals there, and he's ranked 13th by uh, Flo. So you got three guys, uh, according to Flo, that are in the, the top 15 in the nation here. Yeah, I and and uh, Francis Dugan, he he had the injury default at the Beast of the East, where he finished, uh, I believe, in, in in sixth place. But uh, I'm I'm curious to see how how he is uh, health wise, if he can, uh, you know, hang with the with No Adams and uh, get to the finals. Uh, Billy Corber from Bell Vernon, uh, another guy who dropped down in weight. He was 285 last year uh, for Bell Vernon, where he was seventh at the Powerade. He's now at 220. Uh, he's a senior. He's a sixth seed, and he's currently ranked 13th in the state. Nathan uh, Fayer, Fryer from Parkland is a senior. He's a seventh seed state qualifier, uh, ranked eighth in the state. And Tyler Cook from Brookville, uh, junior, who is the eighth seed, was a state qualifier and is currently ranked fifth in the state. So uh, a lot of a lot of talent when we talk about uh, you know top talent, uh, but outside of that, sort of like 195 and, and 182, not a whole lot outside of that. Uh, you got Connor Main from Waynesburg, uh, junior, who's ranked 12th in the state, who uh, who's a transfer from West Green to, to Waynesburg. So uh, I don't really know a whole lot about Connor Main. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing how he he competes. And then Tom Starr from from Kiski area, uh, senior, ranked 18th in the state. Yeah, so again, like you said, uh, this is another one where the the 16 and the 32 rounds might not be quite as interesting, but still enough there that by the time you get to the quarters, it's going to be really good. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, Eric. It's going to be it's going to be good uh, when we get into those those championship rounds. Uh, moving up to 285, this is where we have a returner, uh, a champion, Ronald Tucker, who I was really impressed with last year. He was a freshman. A freshman at heavyweight won the Powerade Championship. I mean, that, and then and afterwards he did a bow. Afterwards, <laughs> like after he won, he did a nice little bow um, in, in the center of the mat, which was pretty impressive for a freshman, uh, 14, 15 years old. But at heavyweight, Eric, at heavyweight, he won the championship. So uh, Ronald Tucker from uh, Lockport, Illinois. He's a sophomore, uh, the top seed. He was a state qualifier, so not not a state place winner. Um, no one is is ranked in the nation other than Brandon Furman from Canamac, who who comes in ranked seventeenth by flow. Uh, Brandon is is the uh, the second seed, but we saw him recently just drop a, a very close decision to Isaac Reed from uh, Kiski area. But those two have been back and forth. They've wrestled multiple times in their careers, uh, including at Powerade last year. Uh, Furman was a fourth. Um, our third place finisher at Powerade last year. He's currently ranked fourth in the state. Isaac Reed is uh, he's sixth in the state last year. He got onto the podium and finished sixth. Uh, Brandon has not made it to the state tournament yet, um, and uh, Isaac is currently ranked third in the state. So, two Whippy old guys that already have seen each other once this season, very likely to see them uh, each other again. Yeah, those are guys that that bang heads uh, quite often, and it looks like they will be again, uh, probably possibly here and down through the line this season. Another guy, sophomore, uh, so another big time sophomore, Quan Debo from Cathedral Prep. Very impressed with him last year as a freshman. He was one of our top incoming freshmen. He's the fourth seed. He finished seventh in the state last year as a freshman at heavyweight. Uh, he's ranked second in the state. So he's the highest ranked wrestler in the state of Pennsylvania um, at the fourth seed position. Uh, Sean Bright from North Hills. He's a senior, sort of been around for a while. He's the fifth seed, ranked 15th in the state. The, and then you got Evan uh, Sweezy from Freedom who's a senior. He was a state place winner last year, finishing eighth uh, in the state, and he's ranked third uh, currently in the state. So definitely some some curious matchups here at the heavyweight, especially with Brandon Furman, Isaac Reed, and Quan DeBeau, uh, three of the top guys in the, na- uh, in the state. Yeah, and as you said, Evan Sweezy, who's one of my favorite names. I like to call him the Big Sweezy. Uh, I, I have a lot of names highlight here at 285. 285 is sort of like uh, 106 uh, in the sense that it's, I think, anyone's game uh, outside of those top eight. Uh, some guys I like, Corey Dotson from Albert Gallatin. He's a, he's a junior. Um, Derek Devine from North Allegheny, also junior. He's, he's had some big wins uh, for himself at North Allegheny. He's, he's been getting better. 
Uh, Josh McGlico from Penn Trafford, he won the most falls in least amount of time at the King of Mountain. Uh, he's a senior. And Derek Skihan from Reynolds, a sophomore, very talented uh, young wrestler for, for Reynolds, and, and I'd like to see how he does. So, um, But that that would be it for, for 285 here. So, uh, Eric, final f- thoughts on, on the, the Powerade? Uh, just so much to look forward to. I mean, from the, the potential matchup at 120 to the depth at 145 to the ridiculousness of 195. I mean, they're just they're, there's so much to watch out for this week, and it's going to be a lot of fun. After wrapping up those really tough weight classes, I'd like to hear from the, the, the man behind all this madness himself. Uh, we're going to talk with Frank Volcano Jr., the tournament director from Powerade, uh, with the 50th year anniversary and, and just – how in, in the world he's able to manage uh, a tournament such as this size and, and this quality. So uh, without ado, Frank Volcano. Frank, how are you doing tonight? Good, Jeff. How are you doing? We're, we're doing good. And uh, I'm assuming you're, you're pretty busy this, this time of year and this, this week. Uh, actually, yes. We just um, finished up our uh, youth tournament that uh, ran today, starting at 9 o'clock. We had a 15 and under and a 12 and under and a 10 and under this afternoon. So we had a busy day to to kick off the week. And then you do a, a JV tournament tomorrow, is that correct? Yes, we, we start uh, at 1 o'clock with a JV tournament. We normally get around 300 kids, so we have a nice turnout for that as well. And, and then it's obviously two hard days of, of the high school uh, tournament, and, and this year especially is a special one because it's the 50th year anniversary of the Powerade uh, which, which started in 1967. Can you just talk a little bit about the, the history of the Powerade, um, how, it, how it came to be, and, and how your involvement uh, obviously uh, came about? Sure. Um, well, back in 1967, uh, my father was their head wrestling coach at California State College at the time, um, now California University of Pennsylvania. But he was the head wrestling coach and uh, needed ways to raise money to uh, get wrestlers to come in and uh, wrestle for him. So he decided to start a tournament to raise some funds to do that. So he started back in 67 and ran it and for 19 years. And then in, uh, 31 years ago, I took over. I think I was 22 years old. <laughs> um, he actually retired from teaching down there and coaching and I was going to school down there. I was actually, um, I believe a junior in college when I took it over back in 19, 19- can't even remember. 31 years ago. <laughs> it's been a long time, right? <laughs> 1985, yes. 1985 tournament was the first one. Now, the Powerade, was, it's been held at, I believe, what, three different locations at, at California State and then Trinity, uh, Canada Mac. Is that is that right? That That's correct. And um, back in 1994, I believe it was, uh, Cal U at the time dropped wrestling. Right. And I decided, you know, why raise money for a school that doesn't have wrestling? So we ended up moving the tournament to Trinity and held that there for a few years. And then um, the demand was very high still, and we started to build the tournament. So I was looking for a bigger venue, and at the time, Ken McMillan just built a brand-new gym um, in 2004, and we've been here ever since. And at the time we moved to Trinity, when we left uh, Cal U, we went and found a sponsor in Coca-Cola, which in turn named the tour, you know, gave us the name of Powerade to use for the tournament. So that's how it got its name uh, through Coca Cola in the transition year from Cal U to uh, Trinity. Frank, can you just talk about with the history of it some of the great wrestlers that have come through here? Uh, who would you you put among the among the top guys that have come through the Powerade and it, it, just the history of it? Oh, my God. I mean, if you just look in the book and uh, look at the history pages of our book, I mean, it's a who's who of wrestling. I mean, just as recent as Kyle Snyder winning Olympic gold this past year, this past summer, I mean, he wrestled in this tournament. Um, We've had many Olympians, uh, Nate Carr, uh, Jake Herbert, obviously Kerry Collat, um, got his start in this tournament back in, I believe it was 1988, you know, as a freshman. He won the tournament. And um, the following two years, he went on to wrestle in the Midlands tournament, which was a college tournament as a high school wrestler, and came back and won it his senior year. So he's really only a two-timer, but easily was <laughs> would have been a four-timer if he would have wrestled in it uh, all four years. But there's been some great ones. Um, Nico Megalutis, I mean, the, the national champions that have wrestled in this tournament, 
I don't have the list right in front of me, but uh, we've had plenty of them come through, though. Now, Frank, in terms of when we talk about the history of it, this year especially, 50, uh, 50 years anniversary is also going to have 50 teams uh, in this tournament. Talk about the field in 2016. Does this rank among one of the best in terms of the depth of, of quality wrestlers? I think the quality of wrestlers are there this year. I don't see a dominant team coming in that I can say that, yeah, I think that they're going to win this tournament. I think this year it's pretty balanced as far as the team race would go. Um, we have some great individuals, but the, the team race, I believe, is up in the air. I don't know if I could pick a favorite at this point. Um, I don't see a clear-cut team that has a dominant roster that that you know is going to win the tournament. Um, so I think it's going to be a very competitive tournament team-wise for the team race, and we have a lot of quality kids. I mean, we have three weight classes with four or more state champions in it, so it's going to be kind of uh, neat to watch. It sort of always is, it seems like. Uh, the power tournament, I've been very happy to, to be a part of that, uh, not only as a competitor, but just covering as well. And um, one of the things I love about the power is how it's ran. And, and you do just, I mean, obviously you've been doing it for over 30 years, so uh, you, you have a, a lot of experience under your belt. But how, how are you able to make the power Age such a successful tournament in terms of the way it's ran? Uh, everything's always on time. You're very good at having everything set. Um, what is what goes into making a tournament like the Powerade so successful? It's just like anything else that's, that you're successful in. If you do all the little things right, the big picture is going to turn out good too. Um, we spend a lot of time on the little details uh, before we get to the tournament and try to get those all set and so there's no snags in, the, in when the tournament starts to run. And I also have a great crew of guys that have been with me for years that just know the routine of what I expect and what – what it takes to run a first-class event. And um, there's no way I could do this all myself um, without all those guys that, that, that helped me. Um, there's just no way I would run and do and, and be as competitive, you know, as it is and run as good as it does without those guys helping. Frank, you, you said about the little things that you have to do to get ready for it. Just talk about the preparation. I mean, we know this week is probably crazy for you, but once this week is over, when do you start looking ahead to next year? Well, actually, uh, the first week of January, we'll send letters out to teams um, telling them that they're not invited back. Um, and we'll also send letters out in January or emails out in January inviting teams back um, into the next year's tournament. And then we'll open it up to teams that want to get in. We have a waiting list of teams that want to get in. And then we sort of select the final, depending on how many openings we have, 10 to 15 schools sometime right after the state tournament to see how all the state tournaments go in different states, see what kind of credentials kids have that could bring to our tournament to build on the competition that we already have here. Now, Frank, you, you talked about sort of looking ahead. Uh, you talked about you took this over when you were 22. Um, your son, Garrett, he's he's about that age, right? He's he's 20 in his early he's 20s. 22. He's 22. My he's gosh. 22. My, uh, let's, <laughs> My, yeah. what, what, what's the future hold for, for Powerade? I mean, do you, do you see this, this tournament just going on uh, for, for quite a while? Do you see it getting any bigger? Uh, you know, the 50 teams, is, that's a lot of teams, a lot of schools to, to host and to hold in a, a, in a high school gym. Where do you, where do you see the Powerade uh, five, ten years from now? Uh, I see it continuing. I mean, uh, hopefully I'll be around those years to, to continue doing it as long as I'm healthy enough to do it. But, um, you know, 50 is our max. I thought we wanted to we wanted to do something because of our 50th year. So we said, let's do 50 teams for 50 years. So we ended up doing that. Um, but that's our limit. I mean, our capacity is, is only so big here. I mean, we run nine mats, and that first session runs tight as far as time-wise. Um, so we cannot go much higher than that unless we go to a different venue, which that's not going to happen in the near future because – I, I'm the athletic director here at Ken and Mac and just hope to be here until I retire. So it looks like the tournament will be here, hopefully, as long as I'm here. Now, now does, Frank, does, Garrett, okay. does, does Garrett have a, a, an interest in, in the power? I mean, I see him there every year. He, well, I mean, he wrestled in it, in it uh, just a few years ago. Does he, does he really take that role as, as son just to, to you know, take the, everything by the, the horns and, and go with it? He's getting better. Let's put it that way. <laughs> you know, he's starting to 
do a little bit more here and there. And I drag him out of the house in the morning, and say, we got to get to the gym and spend 10 hours there getting ready to, to have a show go on there in the gym. So, um, he's shown more interest as he gets older and hopefully someday he'll be able to take over and carry on the family tradition. Frank, you're, you're so busy during the tournament. Are you able to actually enjoy the wrestling or is there, there's so much going on. Do you get to watch much of it? I get to watch a lot of it. It's just like I'm mesmerized by seeing matches because my mind is still going on <laughs> other things that are happening. So I really don't digest it till after when I sit down three days after maybe and just look at the brackets and say, oh, my, this really happened? Or, <laughs> yeah, all these first seeds won or these, this guy beat this guy or whatever. You know, It really sinks in about three or four days after the tournament. Right now it's just a, a maze for the next three days with – with everything that's going on and getting ready for for the big one. Now, now, Frank, just looking at the brackets or the the seeds at least right now, uh, <clears throat> Eric and I were talking earlier about which which weight was was most likely the toughest. We we both said ninety five is, is is one of the deepest in terms of the top, uh, but forty five we've got I think three or four state medalists that are, are aren't in the top eight. So clearly the depth at one forty five is very high. Is there any weight in particular you are looking forward to? Well, um, when you look at just finals or overall weights, you know, I look at them two different ways. Sure, right. Obviously, I like to see the the 195 and the 152. Those both have four state champs in it. Right. Um, that, that are seated in the top eight. The 126, if you ex uh Spencer Lee, there's four state champs besides Spencer, so there's really five in that weight. Right. Um, I think Spencer's above all of them, but you know, there's still four state champions in that weight to go against him, so... That looks like the tough weight, and and one of the biggest ones I'm looking at is the 120. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> we have the number, you know, we have the number one freshman in the country who just won the Ironman, and we have Gavin Teasdale. I mean, what more can I say about him? Undefeated, you know, going to be hopefully a three-time state champ, three-time Powerade champ. Um, hopefully that final will, will will happen, and I think that'll be the the best match of the night. Hopefully. Yeah, that's definitely one that uh, I ran into somebody today, and they were already talking about that. They said, "Man, 120, you get to see Teasdale and and Bartlett go at it." Hopefully, so yeah, I'm I'm with you there, Frank. I I'm hoping we get to see that in the finals, and looking forward to it. Well, Absolutely, that's going to be a good one. Frank, we know you're busy. We know you got a lot to, to do, and, and you still got many more days of, of like you said, the maze uh, work in the tournament. We look forward to seeing you uh, down at, at, at Cannonsburg at the, the Powerade Tournament for its 50th year anniversary. Just a, one of the best events in wrestling, in my opinion, just overall, it, nationally, statewide. It doesn't matter. I think uh, you do a, just a phenomenal job of running this tournament and getting the best competition in there. So we, we appreciate what you do for the wrestling community. I appreciate the comments, Jeff. Um, you know, we just try to every year just try to bring in the best kids and, and show the local community that, you know, the best kids in the country. And we have a lot of good wrestling fans in the year. They like to see the good wrestling. So I try to bring it in and, and want to make our kids better by wrestling the better kids. So we will continue to do that and uh, hope to have a good one this year. And we're having a special video, 50th anniversary video before the finals uh, this year as well. Well, the fi- before the finals is the best part, in my opinion. You dim, you dim the lights, the, the spotlights on. It's the be- uh, it's a it's a greatest show in, in wrestling, in my opinion. So I, I look forward to seeing that that video and, and highlighting everything that that you know is going through the years, the fifty years. And I, I know my dad growing up would always talk about you know the the Powerade Torment at, at Cal U and Trinity and now Canon Max. So it's just rich history, like you said, and, and just a great area to hold it in. Uh, there's no better place than, than Canon Max. So um, we, we appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your busy schedule to talk to us on the, the PA Power podcast. So uh, we, look for, we look forward to seeing you soon, Frank. Okay, see you guys this week. Thanks for having me on. All right, thanks, thanks Frank. Frank. We appreciate uh, Frank Volcano taking the time out to talk to us. Uh, you know, during his busy schedule, we, we really appreciate him uh, and discussing the history of the Powerade 50 years. It's just phenomenal. It's great. I love it. Um, and I'll be going to it for 50 more if I can. Uh, so, but there, there's several other tournaments going on around the state. You got the Hurricane Classic down in Liberty. Uh, it's always a quality tournament. You get some of the top teams from uh, New Jersey and, and uh, District 11 area. Uh, also, some District 3 teams are, are there. Um, and then you got some other tournaments such as South Moreland. 
Yeah, that's one that I always try to make it to every year. Uh, it, it's a little bit, uh, it's more of a double a focused they've gotten a few more triple a teams in there but for me who uh, covers the the southwest double a region pretty heavily it's a good opportunity between the sheets tournament a couple weeks ago the south moreland tournament this week and then the uh the, the thomas tournament in bedford in a few months uh those kind of give me a pretty good idea of what the southwest region looks like and i'm able to see most of the top guys at those three so that's always a, a good one for me to check out uh, the Steve D'Augustino Holiday Classic at West Mifflin, that's been going on for a very long time. That's that's going to be featuring some some tough teams from District 7. Uh, overall, just a really fun way to kick off the, you know, or to start to begin the new year, uh, end, ending 2016 with a bang uh, with all these tough tournaments. Um, and, of course, be uh, at, at Powerade, um, and you'll, we'll have a little booth out front in the lobby, so feel free to, to stop by and chat, uh, either myself or my father. Please stop by. You can stop by our, our table uh, in the lobby uh, at Cannon Mac. We'll be selling our T-shirts and our socks. Uh, we're also going to be selling photos. So if you'd like to have your photo, if you'd like to be photographed during the Powerade, uh, you can come and sign up. And, Eric, your, your, your wife who's a very good photographer, she's going to be taking photos. Uh, so it's you can have a CD uh, printed or, or, you know, ready to go for you uh, of, of your kid. Or, or if you want one, uh, you can you can come stop by the PA Power Wrestling table in the, the lobby and, and sign up to have your, your photos taken throughout the tournament. Yeah, she's been doing this for a number of years in, in different ways, and it's a great opportunity if, if your son is wrestling in the tournament or you're the wrestler yourself, you want to uh, talk to her and have her get a hold of her beforehand, and she can shoot your matches, and as Jeff said, put it on a CD for you. You can take it along home with you, get whatever prints you made, want made from it. Yeah, abs- absolutely, Eric, and it, it should be a great time. I'm really looking forward to it. We're going to be giving you some some feedback while we're there. We're going to have some podcasts while we're there with some of the top performing wrestlers. You can stay tuned to PAPowerWrestling.com for all your, your wrestling needs, uh, especially the Powerade Tournament. We'll be covering that exclusively. Also, uh, Eric will be at the South Moreland Tournament. So uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you name it, we have it. Um, and don't forget to, to visit PAPowerWrestling.com. So, again, we appreciate Frank Volcano uh, stopping by to chat with us. And until next time.